three, two, one. What up, what up, Atomic Domination? Hey, today I was just sketching up some stuff, and I thought, you know what, let's do a different kind of format on our show. Uh, why don't we talk about row one? Yes, we're going to talk about fun in row one and things we need to do and things we need to stop doing. So for right now, that's all I've got. But I want you to stay tuned for that B-roll because you know it's hot. Roll it. Here we are. Welcome back. So, all right. Technically, I don't think we were allowed to use the word Super Bowl, so I think we have to say the big game. Either way, all right, come after me, NFL. I, I guess, you know, you're not getting much. So, um, you got a couple microphones and two turntables and a microphone for you Beck fans. Anyway, all right, so today we're talking about uh, rotation one, okay? And we're going to stop switching at the net. I can't stand it. I've seen so many teams get beat by a ball. First over, setter picking off someone in transition. Uh, blockers at the net getting confused because the right front blocker has to get to the right side and left front blocker has to get to the left side. You know, yeah, I get it. It's old school. So let's discuss it. Let's talk about it. And let's just start off with this really way cool little drawing. I hope you like my illustration style. So anyway, here's what it looks like on paper, right? This is how we submit our lineup. Uh, you know, uh, this is my uh, rotation one. You guys might call this something else, but this is how I do it. But this is what it looks like on paper, right? Got your setter, your OH1, who's front row, your middle, your your oppo, which is your right side hitter, OH2, those guys are opposite. Then you got your middle in the back row, which is also sometimes subbed out as libero, right? So anyway, that's how it looks on paper, okay? But when we get into serve receive, it looks like this. We pull our OH1 back into serve receive. That's pretty typical, I think. I don't think there's any, any secrets being told there. Uh, and then our oppo and our middle line up on the left side of the court. Uh, sometimes there's, you can scoot them in however you want to do it. It's entirely up to you. And you got OH2, your libero, OH1, and your setter. All right. And we know, we know what happens when the ball's served. You know, I mean, setter's going to scramble to try and get up top, and then everybody's going to run their route, and we're going to be all happy campers because we think we're going to get a first ball kill, right? Um, and that's the idea. That's what we want to do. We want to get a first ball kill, right? All right, so let's talk about that for a second. So ball is served. Now we're going to transition to attack. Um, so our OH1 runs our nine ball, and then our oppo runs the four, and our middle is going to run a standard one. So it's basic four one nine ball, stale volleyball at its best. Okay, we're in base position now, so our libero is in left back, OH2 or our DS is in middle back, and OH1 is front row player, and setter is in right back. Okay, so you guys follow along. If not, hey, stop it. Rewind the tape and do your thing. Study it a bit, I guess. All right, so then what happens when we go to base? We attack the ball over the net. We go to base. And now some of you old school guys are thinking, oh, I got to get my right side guy to the right side and my left side to the left side. Well, that's kind of crap in my book, right? I've seen so many, like I said, seen so many teams get beat by that. What happens when the ball, when you get a good dig, and it's not first ball kill, right? So, yes, it's basic, it's simple, and you can do great things at basic and simple, and it lasted in the game for a long, long time, right? And you get a first ball kill, that's cool, and then you're moving on to rotation two, all right? That's cool. Well, what happens if you don't move on to rotation two, all right? Then we're going over here to the reason why Atomic Dom says stop switching, okay? Stop switching at the net because there's a lot of confusion here. Sometimes these guys get caught up with middle because middle's watching the ball, and OH1 is trying to get to the left side, and Oppo is trying to get to the right side, and, and your back row is like, what is going on? What is all the chaos? And they're scrambling. There's a lot of movement going on. The offense on the other side of the net is moving and doing that sort of thing. So a lot of times you hear coaches say, hey, stay for one, and then switch, right? So we attack the ball out of serve receive. We stay for one, and then we switch. Sometimes it works. Nope, not in my book. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I shouldn't officially say that, but... I just want to I just want to tell you that there are different ways to do this, right? Uh, and the reasons why I don't like it, okay? And granted, there's been a lot of state champions, a lot of national champions who run it this way, all right? I'm not saying that this does not work. I'm just saying there's a different way which I like better. So I thought I would share that with you. But 
I feel like your defense is exposed, right? Um, you know, you're, you got all this confusion going on up top, and then the next thing you know, um, RIP, it's called death row, right? Uh, so your back row has no idea what's going on because they can't see or they're reading too much. All of a sudden, they're in this frenetic mode of trying to read and get to base and still cover and watch a, a quick ball coming over because you guys are too busy up here holding hands or doing whatever it is you're doing to try and cross. Um, so your block is typically out of position. You're late. Uh, this is my little version of Swiss cheese right here. See, I've called it out Swiss, meaning it's got a lot of holes in it. And that's the last thing you want is a lot of holes in your block. If you got holes in your block anyway, this will definitely help create bigger holes. I'll tell you that. So, you know, your blockers are always late to the play. A lot of times middle's either going solo if it's quick uh, or someone's going solo on the pin. So uh, you better teach them to be good blockers and handle the ball solo and get absolutely no help which is no fun so uh this is my version of the puking emoji because there's a lot of problems in there and i just don't like it so anyhow so what if your oppo's a lefty all right uh and you're or you know he can't hit he can't hit that four ball so you got to rush him over to the right side where he's more comfortable and it's natural yeah i get it uh or let's just say oh1 let's say oh1 is puts up a small block Right? He might be a decent player, good hitter, can tool, and knows how to use the block and that sort of thing. But what if he just puts up a small block? Right? It has nothing to do with his ability to attack, but to defend at the net might be a bad idea to keep him over there, I guess. So those are some of the reasons why people switch, which is fine. Um, you know, I said, again, if you can't hit a four ball, if your lefty can't hit a four ball out there, then coach, that's on you. Right? You need to teach them how to do that. Or maybe, maybe they're just so broken they can only hit from the right side of the court. I've got a solution for that too. Uh, but this leads to a lot of frustration. Level three bad, you know, you suck, we suck, the team's terrible. All of a sudden the mindset goes down the drain and now you gotta fix that. Fixing that while playing is not a good idea. That's just too much work. So it's dumb, makes you look foolish and then you're breaking clipboards and then that's not professional. And then we're getting super angry. Dark cloud comes and the thunder of the volleyball gods is just raining on your side of the court and you're not happy. They're not happy. Why they're not they, why aren't the volleyball gods happy? Because you're switching. And stop switching. Make the gods happy. So we've got a brighter solution for you. Are you ready for this? We're gonna fix it, baby. That's right. So we're gonna get our little toolbox here and we're gonna we're gonna get our wrench out and I'm gonna show you how to fix rotation one and the switching habit. All right. If you really feel like you need to get your left front hitter to the left side and your right front hitter to the right side. This is where you need to pay attention because it's super simple, right? This is what I call position one. Uh, some players, it's confusing as I, I have two positions. I have position one and position two out of rotation one. So if I call it position two, sometimes the players get confused and they think I'm talking about rotation two, uh, but that's okay. So when we line up this way, we just stay, right? We stay till rotation two. So our oppo is hitting left front because we teach them how to hit the four ball. Uh, our uh, outside hitter is hitting right front. So this guy is just going to transition right out here to hit that nine ball. right? And our oppo, we're comfortable hitting that four ball. If you're not comfortable with him, just don't use him. Setter doesn't set him. You've got three other options on the floor that you can use. You don't have to use that guy. All right. So and are you following along so far? So we're just going to have and these guys stay until rotation two. All right. Well, there's an upgrade from that, right? This is a better upgrade. I like this move right here. Okay. It's a brain, not a hair rack. Let's make sure we use it. Okay. All right. So we're moving on. Let's lock in on how we're going to set up the floor. So here's what we're doing. We're going to take our OH1 from here. Okay. From here. And we're going to slide him all the way over. So we're getting him to the left side of the court already. Middle, oppo, same spots that they were over here. Okay. No big deal. OH2 moves over, and Libero is now defending your setter in, in serve-receive. Okay, this is what I call position two. Uh, so if it's difficult for you or your players to remember what it is, just use team color, right? Maybe position one, as I have position one over here, maybe that's red, okay? And then maybe position two is blue or whatever. Or maybe you have a team mascot. See, I've got a little pretzel drawn in there because my high school mascot was a pretzel. Um Long live pretzels, twist, twist. Okay, so you want to move your players in serve-receive, not in transition, okay? 
Trans we're moving them in transition is just a bad idea. All right, so this is that confusion in, in transition. That's not what we want to do. All right, we want to move them in serve receive. So that's why we have them sliding over here in rotation two, or I'm sorry, in rotation one, position two. Okay, again, OH, OH hits a four ball and your oppo hits your nine ball. Okay, that's what you wanted in the beginning, but you do all this dumb switching at the net, which creates a lot of confusion and it looks very middle schoolish. No offense to middle schoolers, but I'm just saying you can upgrade to a better better system of ball. So just slide them over and have them hit those hit those ball from the pins. You know what I mean? That's all you got to do. It's not that hard. All right, locking in. Here we go. Here are our multiples that we can do over here. Okay, so this is where the the facets of the diamond really start to show, right? So Here's OH1, all right? So OH1 is over here. He's going to hit left front. Oppo's going to go over here and hit the nine ball, and middle's going to do whatever you want in the middle. So here's your list. Front row player, he can hit go ball, a shoot. He's got it. Maybe there's a two ball you can do in there. You can do a combo run with your middle, uh, a tandy, a 32, all right? How about your middle? Your middle can run a one, a 31, a push, a four, okay? You can, you can switch up and have, uh, you can just leave your middle out there. Okay, and you can have your outside hitter run something inside. Okay, that's a nice little combo run for you. All the while, you're getting your lefty back over to the to left front, or sorry, to right front. Okay, so are you with me so far? Anyhow, this is why I love row one. There's so many options. I have so many options, plays drawn up for row one. Uh, and I think my players like it too, and I know that I just overdose on rotation one, but that's, you know, that's me. So, and your oppo. So now that your oppo is over here, if he's a lefty, well, there's no slide option for that ball unless you can, you know, teach that lefty to hit a slide. But if you can teach your lefty to hit a slide, you can also teach lefty to hit a four ball in your traditional lineup. Okay, so don't give me this crap that oh, I know can hit a slide but can't hit a four ball. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, use him as a fake, as a decoy. All right, see my little decoy duck right there. Uh, I know I just love my hand skills. Anyhow, um, fake it. You know, send him. Send him over there, and he's got to go fast. He's got to sell it like he's hitting that, that slide ball. Maybe he even goes through the move. It's all about the sell, right? All right. So anyway, there are other options for this rotation uh, that I think are absolutely even better than what's going on illustrated. It's right here. But I've given you I've given you all of it. So uh, all you have to do is uh, you know do a little exploration and that sort of thing. Uh, I really think that. Uh, it would behoove you as a coach to, to explore and push your players to do something else uh, other than kind of what we're used to, you know, like uh, I'm kind of tired of some of the old lame stuff. So I push myself, you know, I push myself to uh, experiment, you know, I, if something doesn't work, it just doesn't work. Or maybe it just doesn't work with that team. It doesn't say it doesn't work forever. Right. So anyhow, uh, with that being said, I am going to bail out of here, and I'm going to finish sketching up some more shirt ideas, maybe some plays and practice plans, because, you know, high school season is about to kick off. We're at the end of our open gym sessions, right? Teams are kind of, players are working themselves uh, hard to make that spot. There's Some of them are shooting for varsity spots, and some of them are shooting for JV spots, and everybody's trying to shoot to get pulled up. Uh, and it's just a crazy time in the gym right now, but it's a great time to be an athlete. All uh, right, so um, you get to test yourself and where you are, you know, and where you sit and how, the impression that you make on the coach. And remember, uh, if you're new to the program, you know, never, never give yourself an opportunity to introduce yourself to the coach, right? Work so hard that the coach has to come over and say something to you. Have the coach ask, who is this guy? Like, I want this worker on my team, you know, like, be that guy. And don't be a problem, you know, I know you think you're good. But trust me, there's always somebody better, you know. And like I said last time, last episode, you know, a coach's job is to find someone better than you. You know, and your job is to make sure that he doesn't find that person. You know, you want to be the best player in that position on the floor. If you want to play six rotations, you better work at it. And it just doesn't happen in the gym. You know, yeah, sure, you played club season all year. You know, you were the best person on your team. You were a little bigger than anybody else. It's easy for you, right? Well, it may not be the case now. You know, it's a lot different game in high school than it is in club. So, um, you know, you're going to have to work differently. Uh, but make that impression. Make sure you work hard. 
don't ever let the coach doubt that he has to um, remove you from the floor. Like you, you want to be on the floor the entire time. So anyhow, all right, that's all I have on rotation one. We'll get into rotation two stuff later and more advanced things, things that I've been studying across the planet uh, and things that I've been, you know, adapting for my game, that sort of thing. So um, with that being said, I'm going to get back to sketching stuff up. I'm digging some of this little stuff that I have here. But anyway, uh, that's it for me. You guys have a great week. Atomic Dom out.